is the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey, Star Drive League of Man fans. Today, I'm going to do two things. One, we're going to talk about the need for territory capture to be updated because it's been a while. Give you a fresher of how it works because there's so many new servers who are still unsure how to proceed through here. And also, well, we're going to discuss a couple of uh, HINTSs. Yeah, hints, those things. You remember what those are? Yeah, we're going to talk about those, about potential content coming here in upcoming months. So if you're going to want to stick around for that, well, it's actually about to happen real soon. So we're going to do that towards the end of the video. But first, let's go back to territory. Sorry for joining the Formation Armada. My alliance apparently decided to do that right as we were getting started. So the basics of territory are pretty simple, I guess. As an alliance, you can control up to five. You start with a one-star territory, move up to two, and eventually get to three. But more important than that is, I guess, understanding what are the specific bonuses. And because this video is going to mostly target newer alliances and newer players, we're going to focus on what resources they provide. Now, for those who are just here for the G6 uh, spoilers or potential spoilers, you can just kind of watch this, send to your alliance mates who don't know, and then, you know, get forward to the end of the video. So as far as what you can actually find in territory we've actually got some great stuff in my discord i don't know i bring up the discord all the time but where we keep a lot of these resources but here is one of the maps that tells you where everything is and uh shout out to saltrix who actually made this map uh, quite a bit ago but as you'll come up here you'll see various different things like three star gas and four star gas up here in the northern quadrant see we have uh, tritanium mines we have isogen mines and all of these are capturable simply starting with a one star so for example if you started in Perim, you could then move to hubishan and then makala and you would still be able to capture two more so maybe you want to go have zeon and then tefkari so the real key is if you notice these little icons these are going to be the different particles that you need and there are several different particles in the game with phantom particles quantum particles etc not to mention other things as well it's, it's there's a lot now, at the same time, this is actually one of the big benefits because this is one of the better research trees in the game, especially if you're in the level 30s. You really notice this kind of popping up and being very valuable to your gameplay, something that uh, we, we talk about quite a bit. So if we back out here, you if you remember, or if you just looked, you would see on my server, we've got this down here. We call it the Anubis. See a little head, there's the mouth, there's the feet right down at the bottom. Well, transfer it over and you can look at it here in game. It's the same thing. Here's the head. There's the mouth, feet, there's the bottom. So that's the Anubis. Now, why are we there? Well, mostly with my lines being a higher level alliance, we're focusing more on what the bonuses are for territories. If I click my alliance and then actually click territory, you'll see the various bonuses we can get. Beku being a PvP enhancer, which is pretty big for us being a PvP type of alliance. Now, 25% maybe not be as big it is as it used to be. I mean, that bonus is not huge but it helps you also if you notice every three star territory allows you to get metrion particles which you need for the later researches in the game scroll down here see you've got the defense enhancer which is a small shield deflection boost and uh, dodge etc then you got the piercing enhancer and you can see a little bit of a, a focus towards a certain area and then component efficiency which is really big for higher level players in the 40s and 50s because costs are so so high real quick i want to go back to this map though and take a look at it again real quick so again talked about us being down here but you can see the particles that we have and as well as we've got the phantom particle right there and then we've got four star crystal this is also a metrion particle and then you see we are missing other things like if we went over just over here we got the surex particle so one thing that a lot of alliances will try to do is find ways to get all three of the primary particles as well as the metrion particle one example of that that i always used to talk about loving was called the crab so you start here in tegan you go to tezera you pick up a dia bolus is your three star and then prios now if you notice we've got that particle right there then we got the phantom particle another phantom surax phantom and with that we've now got one two three Four with the metrion and four star crystal now the only kind of drawback to that is one maintaining it because you're probably going to have people coming after it but if you notice there's actually a pattern with how the particles get laid out in the game 
Phantom particles are going to be with the Tholian and Breen and Suraction with the Trill and the Boleans. And then Quantums are with the Sulaban and the Corvallon. So if you actually zoom out on this map, you'll notice all the little Phantom particles. Notice how they go kind of right through the middle of territories. And then over here on the left, we got mostly Quantum particles. And then over here on the right, mostly Quantum. So they kind of go east to west. Phantoms go north to south, kind of well, more like northeast to southwest. And then your Surax particle is going to kind of mostly go northwest to southeast. So in this structure, you can find ways to capture all three, with the three stars being pretty big with the Phantoms, or I'm sorry, with the Metrion particles, but you got another three star right over here in Neomer. You got one down here in uh, Breland. You got Barassa. You've got Corva. So there are different ways to try to maneuver and make this happen. So for example, you could have Corva, Krios, Tazira, Adia, and that would give you two of them. And then you just need to grab maybe Ezla. So, I mean, there are ways to make it happen if you want to maneuver around and do this. One other thing I want to take a look at is when does this actually happen? So many of y'all hopefully know the territory schedule. These times are in EST. That is Eastern Standard Time, which is negative four GMT, depending on daylight savings times. But most of y'all are able to convert this if you want to. Tuesdays is an off day, but every other day you see tier one territories. I've got Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Tier three territories are only on Saturdays and tier twos are on Mondays and Thursdays. So if you're looking to schedule when these happen, yes, of course, again, these are in my Discord if you need them and uh, we will gladly give them to you if you're looking for them. Shout out to uh, Eric and Jean-Luc who put this particular screen together. So are we? Are y'all with me so far? Y'all good? Now, again, we're not hitting as much about what to go after particle-wise, right? We're, we're kind of focusing a little bit more on the territories. I'm sorry, the particles are not talking about the bonuses as much, but I do think that those are worth mentioning again. So, for example, every three-star territory gives you the ability, if you want it, to get ISS Jelly. So, you can see Jellyfish Constructor. That opens up blueprints in your ISS jelly field. There's also the other point of this or the other aspect of this, which is the cost. And this is something, especially you newer alliances and newer players need to kind of keep in mind. How much does it actually cost to activate services and capture territories? And that can be a little bit, I wouldn't say, I don't know if I'd call it like expensive, but I would say it is something that you want to pay attention to. And the reason I word it like that is some of the things that end up being problematic for players is when you're in an alliance, these costs can be very high if everybody is doing their refines to make this you know, affordable for the alliance. So for example, a tier one territory is 450,000 refined ISO one, a tier two is 50,000 cores and 500 refined ISO two. And then a tier three is 100,000 cores and 700,000 refined ISO three. That doesn't count all the other things like, well, what actually is in each territory. Now for that real quick, guess what? I've got another screen for you. You thought I was going to leave you hanging. I'm not, don't worry. So we'll come down here and this is again, shout out to Jean-Luc over on server 134, putting this together. You see the officer attack, research efficiency. We've got the deflection enhancer. We've got the gas mining enhancer the Armada C Control Center, all these bonuses here listed on the map. Once again, in the Discord, this is in our territory capture channel of my Discord, by the way. So this gives you kind of the basic overview of what you need to know and what to do in territories. Personally, if you're a new alliance or a newer server, I really say that for your members, the best thing that you can do is focus on getting as many of the particles as you can. Focus on the particles, not the benefits. So if you're a new alliance, don't focus on hostile combat enhancer and armor piercing enhancer. Focus on getting the particles that you need so that your alliance can do the research. That's going to be far more advantageous to you as a group. Now, you've been waiting for it. Here you go. These were posted in Star Trek Fleet Command's latest video that you might not have noticed. So for those who've been waiting for what's potentially G6 spoilers, this is the USS Enterprise E. That is the Sovereign class. How do I know? Well, on the top right, you can actually see it in Photoshop. Now, this is a mesh pattern. So... I don't actually have it broken into a visual that you can clearly see, but it is the Sovereign. I mean, if you're a hardcore Star Trek fan, you can look at the uh, the saucer section right here in the front. You can very clearly see what is a Sovereign class. But 
If you're not sure, it's actually in the title, and this is also in my Discord. Now, this isn't me like leaking anything. It's the stuff they posted. So I assume they expect and want you to know. Another one that I want you to see is this one right here. This is the Negvar. Now, this actually appears a couple times in their video. So worth noting, this is the Klingon major battleship that you'll see in Deep Space Nine. And one of my favorite ships of all time, we assume these are going to be the epics for when Six Star rolls out, which should be here very soon. So there are two little pieces that you may not have noticed that I went and grabbed for you so that you can see. Just to give you a little bit of a confirm, if nothing else, it's very obvious that they're working on these and that they've completed the models. And if they've completed the models, then obviously they're going in the game. I mean, logic would say they're going in the game, but who knows? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Hopefully this video helps you and your alliance. And if nothing else, for you higher level players who've been veterans for a long time, maybe you're looking forward to this. Well, there's that too. I personally love the Enterprise E, even if I'll just be looking at it from afar. Live long and plunder. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next Star Trek League of Man video, as well as Star Trek Infinite, which just got its announced date, and I'll be making a video about that very soon. An even better outro than the intro. For the Empire and glory to your house.